Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well today, another one of our subscribers has very kindly loaned us an interesting subject kit again. Another one of these rather wacky, um, desperate you might argue, um, end of the Second World War projects from Nazi Germany. Um, now I did actually mention in my previous video uh, where we were talking about the Natter and I was trying to remember if it was the Natter or the Salamander at the Imperial War Museum um, down in London. It is in fact the Salamander that they have, I remembered um, when I was talking about it. It dawned on me it was the Salamander they have strung up from the ceiling. Now this time we've got the Salamander, so this is a single jet powered aircraft obviously, uh, built in the fashion of a glider. Um, but actually has fairly good flight characteristics actually, you can understand when you look at it that's probably quite a decent aircraft but they never got any numbers of them out of course, and just a handful. But here we have the sort of stage 2 stroke stage 3 concept of the Mistel. Now the Mistel, or mistletoe, um, is considered to be, um, I think the, the, the reasoning for the name was that it was a parasitic plant and um, that uh, this, this setup is called the parasite because one's riding on the back of the other. That's the theory anyway. Now this is the later version where you've got this Arado E377A twin Umo jet aircraft. So it's using the similar engines that, that are on both aircraft. I think they're actually basically the same as in, or a variant of the one that's in the, uh, the pair that are on the Messerschmitt 262 jet fighter. And on this, this time we've got this slave drone aircraft if you will. Uh, that is basically effectively controlled by the pilot and the salamander and then is discarded. Uh, and they were, they were going to use them to knock out like a, um, a pilotless bomb in effect. With TNT packed in the nose they're going to use it basically as a, as a cruise missile if you will. And effectively the salamander is, is riding on top of it and then he's ditching it and, and using it to try and blow up a bridge in this particular artwork as you can see. Zoom in a bit more, it's a bit, bit reflective this one. There we are. So you can clearly see it is a rather rather strange arrangement you might say. Um, and you could also argue given the situation that the Nazis found themselves in right at the end of the war. Um, I think they tested a couple of these but they never actually used in action at all. So it's, it's not a what if silly one, it's what if that was literally about to be had they continued with the war in you know beyond May of 1945, they would have actually been brought into use. But it never really happened. So nothing more than prototypes, I think, were made. Um, which is probably just as well. But again, um, I'm sure a lot of you will agree when you look at that and think about the concept. It's very wasteful, isn't it? They could not afford to be tossing, you know, something with two jet engines into a bridge just to knock out a bridge. That is absolute madness, really, in terms of resources the lack of them that they had. Anyway, we won't dwell on that. Let's have a look at the kit. Uh, and this is from our good friend, uh, I mentioned it was a subscriber who's helped us. It's John Bevan, who's very, very kindly lent us this one, so I've got to be a bit careful. Uh, it has been opened and resealed, I think, so we're okay. This time it's okay to open everything. Um, but let's have a look at the images on the side and see what you think. I'll just put a bit more light on for you as well. A little bit more than that. There we go. How's this? It's a little bit reflective the Revel box, of course. But there's certainly an interesting little subject, aren't they? So here you've got your salamander, clearly. Try to get the reflections. There we go. Salamander on the top, as you can clearly see. I'll just get a bit closer. There we go. Then it shows you the front of the salamander with the cockpit. Then you've got this very meaty sort of undercarriage system that this Arado has got, twin jet Arado. And there you can see how it piggybacks on it in a most peculiar fashion. Uh, you know, you can almost, <laughs> you can almost not imagine a more wasteful use of war materials that were in very short supply than this. Um, that's what I don't really understand. It's like suicide missions. That's all well and good when you've got lots and lots of equipment and you're trying to save your men and they were shorter pilots, fair enough, but they just certainly didn't have the money or materials to waste on this project, I've got to say one of many that they did, but it does look impressive. It's, it's fancy. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at the kit and see what we've got. So it's a 170 second, uh, reference number is zero, am I on the right way? Yes, I've done the right one. I thought I'd open the unsealed end, but it isn't. 
Uh, it's kit number 04145. Let's have a look inside and see what we've got. Um, I didn't actually check on scale mates if this was a green box or not. Um, it's got hit <coughs> year 2000. I have a hunch it's not a green box in fact this one. I think it may be a Revell original. Some fairly nasty, they always are from this era. All the Revell instructions around end of the 20th century and the start of the century were not very nice. Whereas now they're pretty good to be famous. Um, so you do get a, a sort of a, a sprue map here and you can see it looks like you're going to use all the parts so again I'm thinking it is a Revell, uh, probably an original from around 2000 and then it shows you uh, quite interestingly in this picture down below Salamander, the Arado and then the combination to make the Mistel there. Uh, and it's got this amazing sort of a dolly system of undercarriage. Again, it's a dolly. So it's going to fly off a dolly. Again, it looks like it's fraught with danger, doesn't it? Anyway, let's, let's have a look. So we start off building up our uh, central control. I think this is actually for the salamander. It doesn't say so. Is it? Yeah. So it doesn't say it. We we're building, starting up with the salamander here. You've got your central... Uh, I think there's, an, uh, there's a cannon in the front, isn't there? I think I'm right in saying that. It looks like the typical... Uh, almost like a 109 ammunition bo box, c c shell collection box between the pilot's legs where the stick is. Then you've got what looks like a fairly decent seat and some instrumentation with some decals to go on there. I can't say these instructions are not very big, but I suppose it's because it's 172 and they're not, not maybe going the extra mile. Uh, then you're building up your sort of internals for your cockpit uh, where your instrument's going to go and you've got your rudder pedals. Um, putting all this in together here with your seat and the, uh, the main control area in front of the pilot we just talked about. Then we've got the sort of bulkhead front and rear of the cockpit. And then we're building up the, uh, the it's actually the, sorry, it's not the cockpit, it's actually the, uh, the gear bay for the front, front gear bay. So that's being built up here. Um, in, fact, in fact, it's the main gear bay, it's the twin gear. Yeah, in the middle, so it's the central gear bay. Then we've got some uh, supports and actuators for the doors for the the gear there. I'm saying it's very small, but you've seen this better than I am. It looks tiny to me at this range, but anyway. Um, then you're basically going to build all this together. So you're bringing in that gear uh, gear bay, central gear bay, and you've got your front gear bay. You're building up there with your front nose wheel and leg and tyre. Then you're going to sandwich it all together with the two sides of the fuselage and you've got this rather nice uh, sort of dihedral uh, tailplane arrangement which is quite an attractive element of this aircraft isn't it? Makes it look a little bit like a sort of a glidery type design. There we go. And then you're popping your wings on. Jet engine to go in, that's good. It included a jet engine. I think you can display separately. Maybe not, maybe not. But they've got some detail on it, so that's quite nice, which is better than we're used to at this sort of scale, isn't it? That's good. Excellent. Um, yes, you've got your Junkers Umo jet engine. That's then going ultimately on the top. Then you've got the shroud that goes around it on either side, bringing that in. And then underneath, we've got down to the uh, the gear door and then we've got the main gear door for the main gear bay open or close but I think you'd probably open wouldn't you and then you've got your gear going on there and then all these uh, great wall hobby style instructions this where you've got to put it all together <laughs> then you've got your, uh, your cover if you don't want to have the wheels down you've got the closed cover front and rear and then we've got the canopy going on here as you can see, there's um, like an arrest to stay for holding the canopy open. That's for the main canopy. That's quite good. Or you just close it as normal there. Um, then we have our our. Oh, Keys never being the wings. Was that the tails I was talking about? No, that's strange. We've already seen the wings. What's all that about? What's all that about? 
No, I'll tell you what we've done. This is typical, oh, there we go. Now I'm about to have an instructions rant, are you ready for this? So what's actually happened here is we've completed, we've now completed the salamander and then we go on to the, the arado and it doesn't say so, it just suddenly has you assembling wings and I thought, hang on a minute, that can't be right, we've just done the wings. Why can't it just say part two arado or, you know, even if it was in German you'd understand it, wouldn't you? That's very confusing, that's very confusing. That would have you thinking you've done something wrong and you've gone and glued the wrong wings together or something. How odd. But anyway. We shall persevere. <coughs> As I said, Revel, we're not strong at this time with our instructions. All the clarity uh, within. So, uh, you're then going to build up your Junkers Yumo engines and this time, sadly, we're not going to get a proper engine, which is kind of strange, isn't it? They're giving you a full engine on the Salamander and just an outer on the Arado. And then you build up this uh, fuselage, which looks awful like a torpedo, which is kind of what it is, I suppose. <laughs> Just a big bomb, isn't it? A flying bomb. You've got the tailplanes going in there. And then you just uh, very conventionally attaching those Umo jet engines on. And your wings. And then you've got your mounting assembly to actually mount your salamander to the top of the fuselage. And it... Uh, tells you there not to basically put it on for 10 hours because you need to let the glue set I guess. Revel are very big into that, they used to be, about telling you how long to wait for your glue to set. Uh, and then we've got this very strange dolly arrangement, undercarriage, that's a non-permanent undercarriage for this uh, Mistel Arado 377. Uh, and as you can see, it's really quite elaborate actually, it's a lot of, uh, it's got multiple bogey, it's like a um, tandem style bogies which is very like reminds me of the TSR2 tandem style um, I'm not sure it looks a whole lot better either way <laughs> the way really I still don't think they work, they work that well but anyway uh, and then you've got this um, it's, it's like a tricycle style uh, of design isn't it and there you can see the tricycle bogey uh, dolly, I should say. It's a dolly, not a bogey. It's got bogies on it, very much like a train, the way they've designed them, isn't it? Can you see that? Like a train bogey, or a tank, sorry, tank bogey. Even. Yeah, very similar. Uh, and that all comes together, and then, uh, yeah, you get this... Uh, and then, again, another one of these Matchbox Revell traits of showing you a bigger picture here, and yet it's got items that have only just been assembled down here. Instead of having them the other way around, you know, You've got 47 and 48. Well, that would make some more sense to have 47, yes, but then 48 here, and then every big picture there. For goodness sake, you know. Not very clear. Anyway, that's typical of Ravel, I'm afraid. But there we go. But it is a very intriguing looking thing, isn't it, when you see it? It's just like a huge torpedo, really, with a salamander riding on the top. Um, frankly, a concept, I'd say, that was doomed to fail, unless you have limitless resources, it's quite pointless. The only point of this whole thing is to save pilots' lives, because um, they were short of pilots, uh, so that, that was driving it clearly, but it was not going to save any money or resource. Uh, to be throwing something of that size, you know, it's almost like a, well, you'll see it there, it looks like a Messerschmitt 262, doesn't it? To throw that into a bridge or a, you know, an armoured column or a building and then lose it, seems very wasteful to me as a concept. But let me read you what it actually says here, because I think that could be of, of great interest to you. So, Ravel, I've, it's good that they've given you some history. Um, even though the photograph I've provided is rather awful, it's very blurred. It says, toward the end of World War II, the German aircraft industry designer designed many advanced projects. <laughs> One way of putting it. Some of which were built and flown, while others remained on the drawing board. Amongst the more promising of these projects was a series of Mistel unmanned bombers carried by a piloted fighter aircraft on top. Taking the bomber components towards its target and at the right moment the bomb will be jettisoned and continue on its way to journey down to the target under its own power. So they waste two jet engines on this one. But anyway, early Mistel projects comp com comprised a Messerschmitt BF-109 or a Focke-Wulf 190 carried by a Junkers Ju-88. The bomber components was nothing more than a basic airframe filled with high explosives. The Mistel 5 project of late 44 comprised specially designed Arado E377 twin jet engined flying bomb which carried an adapted Heinkel 162 salamander on the top. 
Unlike previous Mistel lower components, the Arado 377 was jet powered and to be of relatively simple construction, fitted with very simple control surfaces and to save weight and complexity, dispensing with any undercarriage, it relied on a special 20 ton Rhine Metal Borsig trolley or dolly for takeoff. Unlike its HE162 fighter component, the 377 was never built. The HE162, known as the People's Fighter, Volksjager, uh, or Salamander, it was called a Salamander as well, wasn't it? Sure it was. Um, People's Fighter was itself a remarkable aircraft, having been conceived in a, in a competition with other manufacturers on the 8th of September 1944, and a mass produced high performance fighter. It was first flown on December the 6th, and it was to enter service early in 1945. It was a relatively simple and largely prefabricated mixed metal and wooden construction. And remarkably, it was fitted with a simple cartridge activated ejection seat. Gosh, rather you than me. <laughs> Gotta get sucked into the jet engine for one thing. <clears throat> the BMW, okay, so it's a BMW engine. Um, so I'm just seeing if it says what the 377 engines were. The single BMW 109003E1 turbojet gave a maximum thrust uh, of 1,764 pounds, giving you a maximum speed of 522 miles per hour. Well, that's quite a lot, isn't it, actually? And that was at 20,000 feet. Armed with two 20mm MG151 cannons or a 30mm MK108 cannon cannons. Uh, it served operationally but with limited success and was based at Lech until the end of the war. Had the war continued the Mistel 5 would have been realised in which case specialist Mistel units uh, KG200 would have probably been involved in the operational trials. So they didn't quite get to trial stage. Didn't really happen did it? But it was definitely sh slated to happen. Um, but I think the Americans overran them and that was the end of that Lech. So anyway very interesting, there's no question about that. Now, John Bevan has told me, yes, by all means, open the bags because you want to see it. I'll try and do this in a sensitive way, or as sensitive as I can. Let's have a look, see what we have got here. Okay. Several bags, that's the pack is rather well, in fairness. That's it rather well. Now then. I have to tell you, before I even get through to the bags, to the actual parts, that I'm not convinced that this is Ravel. It says Ravel on it, but it's something about it's not convincing me. So, I'm looking at it, by the time we see this on live chat, I'll have checked and I'll tell you. I've just got this feeling the plastic looks wrong for Ravel for most other things. It could be another one of these, you know, Dragon or maybe CMK or something like that. Let's have a look. Right, now then, I think we'll have a look at these engines first. So this is the engines for the Arado. Here we go. And don't forget, there's only 70 second scale and this is, it looks pretty nicely moulded actually. So again, I'm just <laughs> fueling my suspicion it's not Ravel original. Uh, they, they don't have a track record that's that great on things at this size. And the, look at the back of that. I think this is the Umo engine. I don't know if you can make it out with the camera, but you can see the uh, the fins at the back of the jet engine there. They, that's really detailed. That's very good. Obviously, you've got your uh, uh, your sort of exit fins, guide fins for the exhaust here. But I'm talking about inside here. You can actually see the veins, uh, the blades in the engine. That looks amazing. So that's good for starters. It doesn't look like Ravel plastic either, if I'm honest, so I don't think this is a Ravel original. We'll check. So here's your, um, I'm not sure now if it's BMW, BMW engines or Yumo engines, I'm not quite sure. But I think BMW took over the production, didn't they, anyway? I think we've talked about this before. That is a very nice sprue, I have to say, for a small one. Let's have a look at what we've got on the big one. We have got lots of goodies here. And it looks like we've got the... It's, this is the Arado 377A. Uh, it's got these uh, great big straight 
fairly straight glider like wings I'd say and then we've got this very intricate uh, bogey system that goes on this uh, trolley or dolly as I think is a more correct term really this undercarriage system look at that there's the bogies very nicely moulded not really any flash to speak of nothing significant anyway here's your wheels and tyres for all your bogies there's your sort of great big girder like uh, mainframe pieces some good recessed panel line detail here on the wing and then we've got the torpedo like looks like one of these Japanese concepts this doesn't it I wonder if that's where they got the idea from so we know that Japan had something similar didn't they the nicely recessed panel lines the, the moulding is really good got to say really good and there's your tail planes there, there. One on that side, one on that side. Looks very good. Looks very good. Just going to get a little bit more light. There we go. That's better. Yeah. That's very nice. Like it. Like it very much. Okay, well there's nothing wrong with it at all. It makes, it makes me wonder if it's Ravel then. <laughs> Normally I can smell a Ravel a hundred miles away. <laughs> Just have that very flashy plastic and you know the molten and grey etc etc. And that's not suffering from any of that. So what else have we got? We've got in here, uh, oh, another, well I won't, I won't unbag this because I'm not sure it's necessary because it hasn't got that many parts in it, but I've just got this separate bag with some of the small components in. I think it's uh, some of the cannons and there's like a, 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 a hook for, a lifting hook for on top of the, uh, it's on the salamander. Is it a lifting hook? No, it's the aerial, radio aerial, what am I talking about? Radio aerial. And then, yes, we've got uh, some fairly small parts, the instrumentation's there. That's all very good. I'll leave that in this bag. Um, I think we should probably have a look at the... should probably have a look at the... clear parts. I'm sorry, I've done quiet because I'm slightly stunned by what I've just seen. I don't recognise the clear parts. Let's just open this carefully. Side. Right, so. Got a new blade, you probably notice it's opening things a bit better, he says, but it doesn't. Well, I'm completely dumbfounded what that is. Surely that is an error. That. <laughs> I can't explain this. What that is, is an MI28. M1, M128 helicopter? It's a helicopter canopy, surely. I don't know how that's crept in here. I think John's got himself a bonus here because that was definitely sealed in with it. And he's never opened these, so that's a bit of a mistake at the factory. <laughs> so there you go, John, you've got yourself a bonus part there. This is the one we're really looking for, which is, there isn't a lot of uh, clear parts. It's just this, um, the HE162 uh, basically the, uh, the canopy. So let's get close. It's a little bit misty looking, isn't it? Again, it doesn't look particularly Ravel. Theirs are usually cl very clear, but very distorted. This doesn't seem to be suffering too much distortion, but it's not very clear. It's quite yellow, misty coloured. You see that? It's a little bit uh, cloudy. Might benefit from a bit of dipping, I think that would. But quite well we've got... Yeah, that's definitely uh, one of these Russian helicopter cockpits, isn't it? MI28, M128. For sure, that's definitely nothing to do with this kit. I'm sure that's very odd that that's crept in to a sealed bag out of earth. Something has gone wrong in the way that the, uh, the factory are bagging up their product there because they seem to give them a bonus part. Anyway, not to worry, that's all good for John, isn't it? Uh, and then, coming out for you, uh, and then we have got one last. Well, last bag with all the salamander parts in it and I'm almost totally convinced now this is not a Ravel original I just don't think it is it's somebody else that's done this it's either I think maybe CMK or maybe ICM but they're, they're a bit too new aren't they? or maybe Dragon this is nice again doesn't even the plastic it's got a slightly 
pearlescent quality to it. It's not at all like Revell used, which is the nastiest rubbish ever. <laughs> I'm not a fan of their plastic at all. But can you see this sort of pearlescent look to it? Yeah, it's got like a pearly effect in the plastic. Very strange, very strange, but it's nice. And they've got the fatal mistake here of having the, uh, it's the cannon, isn't it, I think, at the front. Cannon. Yeah, it fires through the nose into the cannon. Um, yeah, they've gone and attached that instead of having it as a separate part. And of course, when you start assembling the kit, before you know it, you'll knock that right off. <laughs> end up having to hunt for it and the, hoping the carpet monster hasn't taken control of it. Uh, it's probably fly across the room, that's what normally happens. <laughs> I think we've all been there, haven't we? But look at the, uh, the rather nice wingtips. See the wingtips? Look at that, the little downward pointing uh, tips. Very nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, it's a nice sprue, and here's your, uh, here's your dihedral tail, tail plane, I should say. With your side plates there. Like a miniature Lancaster bomber. <laughs> there we are, on the side, a bit more detail. Jet engine, very nicely done. Why they couldn't do that on the other, uh, on the Arado as well, I don't know. This looks like it's about to leave the sprue. Mm, sure. I think I've got to touch that, it's going to fall off at any second, isn't it? It's very delicate. And then you've got your little undercarriage, you've got your seat. Uh, various little components, gear legs, etc. Yeah, um, I've got to say that the uh, you've got more guns, haven't you, underneath here? More guns. Did it, did it say again about the weapons? Mm -hmm. Two twenty. Two twenty millimeter cannon. Is it on both sides of the cannon? Yes, there's a cannon on both sides. Hmm. I thought I think this got this has got a thirty mil up the middle as well. It looks like a cannon to me, and it looks like a cannon here. And you've got this. We talked about it in the instructions. The uh, MU109 style of um, uh, ammunition box between the pilot's legs, which is very typical of the era. Well, I have to say the moulding is very very nice. Can't really fault any of this. Um, which is why I perhaps slightly cynically say, sound cynical when I say I don't think it's Ravel because it would be covered in flash, you know, from that era. Uh, if you've ever had the F-15 E Striker, you know what I have, you know what I mean. Uh, but it's very, very nice indeed. So, where are we at with it? Well, um, we don't like uh, the box style particularly and instructions are a bit, bit too small. But being a bit picky really, it's actually much, much better than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a 7, 8 out of 10. I think I'm going to give it 9, because I'll forgive it these small foibles. I say, well, check, um, but I'm pretty sure that's not Ravel. If that's Ravel, I'd be really surprised. Even the typeface where they're stamped, the sprue does not, is not Ravel typeface that they normally use. So I think it's maybe uh, CMK or something like that. But we'll find out later. 9 out of 10 is my my verdict on that. I think it's a really nice little kit. Um, very interesting concept. I've really warmed to it as well as I've gone through it. So, 9 out of 10. Thank you very much. Please give me a 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. Um, smash that like button for me. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you have, of course, you'll need to ding that notification bell. Because doing that obviously makes you get instant alert when I've uploaded a new vid. So please go ahead and do that. And in the meantime, until next time, we've got one or two more interesting things that have also been uh, sort of loaned to us by other very keen subscribers. And they're all quite interesting ones as well. So uh, sometimes, you know, people say, oh, I can do this and I can do this. And you think, well, I'm not sure about that. Nearly all of them that have actually come through, excuse me, have been really nice. And some fascinating subjects that are, are, again, I've never seen one of these in any form before. Um, I should just mention as well, um, again, thank you very much to John Bevan for sending us this. Really appreciate it, John. I'm going to repack it nicely for you. We'll get that back in the post safely for you. 
Um, our old friend Paul Hunter has also been in touch and coincidentally said that he's got the 48 scale HE162 Salamander. So I think that's going to be interesting. He's going to send that quite soon. Keep watching the channel because uh, that and several other interesting things that are coming even sooner will be on the channel very soon and you should definitely watch out for that. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for your time. Hope you all stay well and stay safe. And until next time, thanks a lot. Bye for now.